Well, good morning. This is Pastor Randy Scott with Iron Faith Fellowship Church with our morning tidbits. And uh, joining you this frosty morning here in Delaware, we got a little snow, ice, a little bit of everything. But as you can tell, I got my winter hat on and uh, <laughs> some of my Michigan uh, followers may not be too happy with me uh, this morning when they tune in. But, uh, you know, uh, most of them know I am who I am, and uh, uh, they shouldn't fret too bad. But, uh, you know, I can use this as an illustration. You know, back in the day, there were so many uh, rumors going around about Michigan and Ohio State coaches, Woody Hayes, Bo Schembechler. And uh, there's a, a myth that Woody Hayes ran out of gas. And he was at three miles in the Michigan line and pushed his car to Ohio. He wouldn't even buy gas in Michigan. And I think that's kind of sad. And, you know, they became known uh, for who they were. And, you know, how about us? How about how important is a name? And, you know, every one of us have a name. We have a last name. We have a first name. But what does that name stand for? You know, that's the question today. Everybody knows your name. And many people know your name. But what does it stand for? What does your name mean to them? Are you a trustworthy person? Are you somebody they can come to? Are you somebody they can trust to share a deep, deep secret with, knowing that you won't share it with everyone else? Uh, it's very important how we conduct ourselves, uh, especially in the body of Christ. I mean, many people know me as Pastor Randy Scott. Now, what does that mean? What does that mean? Okay, what people expect out of me that know me is the word of God. But what if I'm preaching the word of God, sharing the word of God with you all, but living a whole different life? And, you know, God reveals those things. You know, there's nothing to be done in the darkness. He won't reveal in the light. So we don't get away with anything. And, and we see it today. What's important to pastors out there and what their name has become synonymous with. And I want my name to be synonymous with Christ. I truly do. I don't want to lead anybody astray. I don't want to be a stumbling block. Uh, sometimes I'm overcautious. Am I perfect? No, I'm not perfect. But let me tell you the importance of a name. Uh, there was a time in my life, and I, I, you know, I'm just sharing things because you know Christ made a, a major difference. And I started dating Karen, and uh, man, she was the most awesome thing to ever happen to me. I met her; there was just something different about her. She was uh, quiet. She was uh, quite the opposite of me. And uh, but her friends, she had some. Sim she had some friends that I was acquaintances with that I went to school with. And incredibly, when she told these friends who she was seeing and who she was dating, immediately they said, no, you, there's no way. Randy Scott, you're dating Randy Scott. And, you know, they did everything they could possibly do to break us up because my reputation was so bad. My name was known for doing sinful things. Uh, uh, that's what I was known for. And that's how people looked at me. And, you know, when I got saved, uh, uh, again, you know, you think, wow, you know, things are going to change. I'm changed. And, and uh, you know, you can't prove, you can't tell everybody you've changed. You've got to prove you've changed, but not to them, to God. And uh, uh, I, and I've told people, I said, you know, when I got saved, my family didn't come rushing to my door saying, oh, right, Andy, Randy, hallelujah. You know, they still had a trust issue. It was eight years before my family started coming around, uh, before friends uh, started trusting, friends that knew me, that grew up with me, uh, actually had a couple of good friends at my sister Robin's funeral that took me outside and were honest enough and loved me enough to tell me, they said, if you were still doing what you were doing, we would not even have come to pay our respects. We didn't want to be around you. Wow. That's what my name was synonymous with then. So today I'm very serious. And our names have to be synonymous with, with something better. When somebody says your name, if they say Yvonne, uh, uh, let me get it right, hey, Mac, <laughs> or they say Harry Morris, or they say Madeline Myers, okay, men are using that name, okay, what are they using that with? And let me share with Harry, and I know he doesn't, he does not like this, I know he doesn't, and he'll probably quietly let me know, it, but Harry does things on, on the quiet. And I can toot his horn. The Bible says, you know, let another one praise you and not your own lips. And uh, I'm not going to tell you everything he does, but I'm going to tell you something. When something's mentioned, uh, you know, you, you just know that, that Harry's going to do it. 
You just know he's going to do it. But here's how he does it. He does not want to be mentioned. Now, like I said, I mentioned him today. Uh, uh, but he just he does things. Another young guy that 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 does things. I walk in my office uh, every day, and there's there's a case of water in there. If I get down one case, there's another case of water down there. I always have four cases of water in there, and and uh, you know this person brings these things in, and uh, you know, and I know that, but I'm like, wow, you know, that, that's just the kind of heart they have. They have a giving heart. So when I mention those names, I, I think of giving, sacrificing, humble. Uh, uh, so what is our name synonymous with? Okay. How do people know us? Do we have a bad reputation, a good reputation? Am I known as a Marine or is I known as a Christian? You know, uh, I know we joke around. I see my brother, Chris uh, Anderson's on here. I'm a brother in the Marine Corps, but, uh, you know, how do we want to be known? You know, that, that can't be first and foremost. We joke about it. We kid about it, but we want to be known as believers of Christ. We want our name to be synonymous with Jesus. And but we have to walk that way every single day. And we have to be humble. Uh, we can't say one thing and do another. That's hypocrisy. Uh, so your name is very important. What it stands for out in the community, even in our families. What does our name mean? You know, my name means dad in my family. It means papa in my family. But you know what also that means? That means that they have a trust for me that they can come to me and they call me. There's a respect there. But they, but I had to grow to that place of respect. You know, my children went through some very troubling times in the beginning, my daughter especially. And it took a long time for fear to leave her uh, uh, as I got saved and I was changing. I would get angry. She would just get terrified. And uh, But there came a place in time where she said, wow, my dad is... My dad is doing what he needs to be doing and, and the, the trust and the love uh, that has come out of that. And, and I'm so blessed. But the trust and the love with my peers in the community, uh, people have seen things. So it's the same thing with all of us. Not because we're a pastor or anything. Like that, that really, that's a calling. That, that really, I'm not making that sound like, please don't take it that way. It doesn't sound like that's what, but bottom line is this. What does our name represent? What does it represent to those around us? If someone says, Boy, if you go to that person uh, for prayer, they're going to pray. How do you know they're praying? I'm going to tell you something. Stuff happens. Stuff happens. When you have somebody that genuinely, deeply, Holy Spirit praying, something happens. You just know. Uh, you go to a person uh, and you, you send a person, well, you go to this guy and you ask this person for a hand. I guarantee. And they go to that person. That person says, well, shadow doubt. They drop what they're doing and they come and help you. That's what your name represents. That's what your name represents. If a pastor says, I love you from the pulpit, but that's the best he does. No, that pastor needs to come down. That pastor needs to be intimate with you. That pastor needs to hug you, love you, take time for you. That pastor's door needs to be open for you. If that is not the case, okay, something's not right there. Something's not genuine. Uh, uh, and I learned that the hard way. I learned that the hard way. My door is never closed. My door is never locked. Those folks need me. I'm there. Now, again, Within reason, I'm not God. I'm not God. And you can ask our congregation on Sunday afternoon. Nora's on here. Who else is on here? Jim Williams is here. Harry Morris uh, uh, that are sitting at congregation. What am I doing Sunday afternoon after church? Nap. N A P. So on Sunday, my name is synonymous with nap. Okay. I get done preaching. I'm worn. I go home. I take a nap. And I tell my congregation that. I'm like, look, God's on the clock 24-7. Okay, this pastor needs to rest with his family, and I'm going to do that. Don't call me till after 4 o'clock. Even if it's an emergency, you call. My wife will get it. They'll get to me. Believe me, we'll take care. But God's on the clock 24-7. I'm not God. I can't do everything for you. But what I can do is that I will do. But I want my name synonymous with Christ. I want people to say, that guy's all about Jesus. I Maybe even forget my name. Forget my name. Forget Chris Anderson's name. But it's not, I, mean, I mean, I don't know what that guy's name is, but he's all about Jesus. I don't know what that girl's name is, but she's all about Jesus. Hey, man, if you don't want to hear about Jesus, don't go around those guys. <laughs> you know, but understand this. Understand this. We are crazy, sinful people that were transformed out of a life that people hated us for. We were hated. We were rejected. Talk about rejected of men. We did it on purpose. And I know people will come on here. Sheila will come on here. Oh, I love you. I get all that. I get all that. But they didn't trust me. They didn't want me around. Uh, 
But then when I got saved, and I'm telling you, eight years passed. I didn't do it for them. I did it for Christ, my family, those kind of things. I started getting phone calls. Started getting phone calls. Would you talk to your cousin? Would you talk to this person? Can you come home and do this? And I'm like, I was just like, Where, where's all that coming from? Where's all that coming from? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There's nothing I did on my own, nothing. Take no credit for anything. And the word of God says, guess what? There's one name only where which you can you can be saved, and that's Jesus Christ. But let me share a scripture with you. Let's go to Proverbs. It's very important to God what kind of name you have and how you represent yourself. Go to Proverbs uh, 22. I'm going to read uh, this one verse. It says, a good name is to be chosen rather than great riches. Again, what are you known for? Loving favor rather than silver and gold. I think it's pretty plain. Pretty plain. Your name represents who you are. Just like Jesus Christ represents who he is. God. God came to save his people. Us. Died on the cross. Man, there's no other name uh, by which men must be saved but Jesus. And that's so important. And that's what we've got to represent. Man, when somebody looks at our face, they should see Jesus. Now, I know I'm wearing this Ohio State hat. Chris Anderson's probably ecstatic. Jumping up and down. I think Yvonne said Ohio too, but uh, uh, but I put this on sort of like for a joke. But it's winter time here. It's winter time here, and as you can tell, okay, I ain't got much covering up here, so I got to cover it up. But I'm sorry, that's all I got is Ohio State and Green Bay Packers stuff. So, <laughs> but anyhow, I love you guys. Uh, hope this is helpful. I uh, hope it helps us sit back and really review who we are in Christ and what our name represents, and can we be trustworthy? Can we be expected to pray? Can we be expected to serve? Can we be expected to help? The thing about it is be careful. Don't be expected to do everything. Don't be expected to do everything. But you will come to be known by what you're willing to do. If you're sacrificing, if you're humble, uh, whatever that name represents, that's what we strive to do. And all of that represents Christ because he was humble. He never thought of himself. He thought of us. He met the needs of other people uh, without expectation you know and uh, that that's the greatest thing so humility should should run alongside of our names every time so folks remember it's important it's important how we conduct ourselves our reputation out there speaks volumes and it will tell you what our reputation depicts him in our life and people look at that. Believe me, man, the devil wants to, to everything faulty to come out of our life. Boy, that, that's what Christians do. That's who they are. That's what, because that's the kind of a testimony example we set sometimes. We got to do it different. We got to do it better. Let's have a better name. Amen. Let's have a better day. Uh, I don't know how the weather is in your place, but it's cold and, and uh, frozen here in Delaware. Weird kind of weather. <laughs> but anyhow, love you guys. Be blessed. Let's pray. I uh, hope you could hear me all right. Uh, like I said, I'm in my home office. I'll be back in the, the office tomorrow. Uh, but, you know, that is how it is. You get to take a look at my home. I live like a normal person. Uh, <laughs> not, well, whatever normal is. But let's pray. Father God, we just come before you. We thank you. We pray. You. Holy Spirit, move in our lives. All those that are watching that are believers, Father, move in our lives. Shake us. Move us. Father, help us to see the importance of how our name would represent you in everything that we do through prayer, through humility, through service through mercy, through giving, whatever that uh, whatever that means, our names need to represent you. Father, our reputations should precede us. That when people see us coming, they're like, wow, they're all about Christ. They're all about Jesus. If you don't want to hear about Jesus, <laughs> okay, that's not the person to hang around. Let's learn not to compromise. Let's learn not to give in. Father, help us, strengthen us. The most important thing is that our testimony shines in a world of darkness that that person that needs you is Lord and Savior so desperately. Father, that our reputation, our reputation would show that so much. Be like Paul and Silas. They would come to us and say, what must I do to be saved? That's the kind of reputation. That's what our name should represent. Father, we thank you. We praise you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, guys. Good to see everybody this morning. And guess what? We'll see you tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. for some more morning tidbits. Be blessed. Don't stress. Give God the mess.